Welcome to the Love Change Podcast. We are a bit delirious this evening, apparently. <laughs> Me, no. If you uh, like change or not, but you're interested in change, uh, you can find this uh, after the live stream on Spotify, Apple Podcast, we have a YouTube channel. You can always decide if you want to see us with video or without. We're available both ways. Yeah, I have I have a lot of silent yawning. So if you check the video, you can see me. <laughs> always more fun. Hiding yawns. <laughs> like pulling funny faces. <laughs> so enough about my uh, weird habits. <laughs> it's a long list. Oh, yeah. It's just a little bit. I'm not going to open up today. <laughs> We're going to talk about why do we want change. So... Uh, I had to spend a good uh, half hour explaining the topic to our co-host. <laughs> it was not clear what it means. Um, so life can throw you curveballs. You have to adapt to certain things. Why? Um, or why not? Yeah, or you're chasing certain dreams. You're trying to get some change going on in your life. Um, what motivates you? The why. It's it's the big one behind all the what. Uh, and uh, it's uh, about intrinsic motivation. It's about feeling your purpose or not. Truly knowing why do you want to get good at change. Because it is a skill set. It is a mindset. And you see plenty of people that are... Uh, hit with disruption in their life, they're dealing with some type of loss or intense change and uh, they might be uh, not ad as adaptive as they could be. Yeah, and uh, getting good at change is, is, is a type of skill. So you're going to start somewhere where it's not necessarily going great and then you have to decide what the driver is to really be like yeah, I want to be good at that. And I think uh, that feeling we all know because it's really applicable to all kinds of skills that we needed to learn. Either mm. as a kid, I don't know, writing or dry, uh, riding a bicycle, all kind of those things. It's like, can be very unpleasant, can be a lot of fun, but to overcome this period of like falling and getting up again in and any sense well said, well said. is, uh, yeah, it is a uh, mindset that you need it, to. Yeah. Yeah really this like this active type of learning right mm. until it gets a bit more of an autopilot yeah and also just getting through certain things mm -hmm. um, like getting success or getting uh, joy out of really <laughs> getting good at something it needs time well I guess the getting good part of it delivers joy but the initial phase of it might be not pleasant at all mm -hmm. or uh, some people start their studies don't finish mm -hmm. you know so their why got mixed up in the in the process that they're not able to tap into that motivation that got them to begin mm -hmm. I guess uh, this is where if you look at life and you're like pursuing some change that you want mm -hmm. and then Something happens that you did not want. So you're dealing with that disappointment and the frustration. Mm -hmm. And then it's a segue. Do you recover from that and go back towards the thing that you're trying to do? Or are you like, no, nah, this is never going to work. Mm -hmm. Those are the moments that I feel like the why determines that decision. Mm -hmm. For you to say it's not going to work. Is you actually not remembering why you started in the first place? Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, you didn't have a clear why. You thought it would be cool to have a corporate job. Or easy. Or bunch, safe. Yeah, a bunch of uh, yeah. assumptions. And actually, assumptions are very poor reasons. Mm -hmm. They're not, actually. <laughs> They're not. Yeah, but also what I like uh, that you keep saying is uh, that giving up and getting back up is the same effort effort yeah. and that is also something important like start starting studying and deciding to pull through it's gonna cost you the same effort as deciding to give up because then 
it might feel easier to give up in that moment but most probably if you are not really like in line with this decision then you're gonna just every day see it as a failure possibly mm. so i think in that sense like it's really important to look behind this why as well and be like if i'm giving up did i find something else or i decided it's just not for me or whatever mm -hmm. to like also find closure to that decision you First know? of all, I must disagree on the study front because <laughs> I think dropping out of school costs way less energy than continuing. Nah, but all, all jokes <laughs> aside, um, the, the, the thought behind saying giving up and trying again costs the same energy, is the same effort, it's just a different direction. Also has to do with... Um, if you give up on, let's say, riding your bicycle, mm -hmm. every day, again, you get the opportunity to try riding your bicycle. And every day you give up on it. You don't make that decision. Mm -hmm. And you have to continue doing that to truly give up. And that yeah. is that decision is the same effort. You can also decide, I'm going to try again and again and again until you get good at it or not but to really say i want to ride this bicycle or i want to finish my school uh, question is why because if you don't know the why i think giving up is an easier decision to make probably but still like giving up on studies gotta defend myself in that sense if i decided i'm going to drop out of my studies and that also um, doesn't allow me to apply for a certain job, then I'm going to be faced with the same You're missing decision out. You're missing made. out. Yeah. yeah, it's going to have That's a big, rip, big ripple from. effect. Yeah. Ha. Yeah, I completely <laughs> agree. So yeah, in the moment, so, yeah. it might be easier to be like convenient, like after comfortable. Shit. Yeah. Uh, comfortable, not so, do it. Yeah. No, but on that's the thing like in that moment if you're like uh, one curriculum removed from getting your uh, exams and degrees mm -hmm. and in that moment you're like oh i don't feel like it mm -hmm. anymore i had people studying with me and like you could do your exams twice um like failing once and then the second one you needed to go through and if you didn't then you need a special reasoning why you i don't know have been you retarded at the chance. day of the exactly but some people just really decided then that they just don't want to continue because the facing the pressure of doing that exam again and like then mm -hmm. really being excluded from studies so not their own decision made them decide to drop out themselves before mm -hmm. which i never understood but yeah i get it it's more like now it's my decision because otherwise I, you go it for gets the you, you, for me. yeah you get for the third try and then you're like no you're <laughs> you also spend some time to learn for that yeah, yeah. i get that uh, but yeah yeah but um, I, I like the topic the why for me if i think back at school or or work why i didn't apply for jobs Mm -hmm. is like if i don't know why i'm doing something i have a lot of trouble doing it <laughs> i just can't you also struggle just with it can't do something if i don't know what i'm doing it for yeah in that sense i would be a horrible employee also to uh to be um with my manager because if i would get told hey you gotta do that i'd be like yeah but give me a bigger sense yeah, what's like the grant of this, grant or? scheme what is what is it for why do we need it because then i also do the job much better mm. you know I I really, yeah i really execute much better other than just like yeah doing something and uh yeah in corporate world sometimes <laughs> you get thought that you shouldn't ask those questions because uh, it's, uh, some things play you your just role. play your roles and some things also just get done for the garbage bin. It is just true. So sure. that would really like that would really also get me um, very much shaken up and asking myself why am I doing that? How did you answer that question? Sometimes I would pull through, but sometimes I would really carry it on long long time with me and like what does that mean? yeah just like come come with the same topic back and back if uh, there would be another thing to do mm. that my, my manager would give me i'd be like hey is that gonna be crap as that one project that we had and mm. then i would get told uh, can you please let go of that i was like no because it just was really crap i don't want to do that again like 
cost me and my team I don't know how much time and hours mm. and effort and whatever and yeah I just really I just really never understood that how people can just execute and be like you know like I met plenty of people along the way they were just like I don't ask those questions like if they tell me to do it just do it it's like keeps me busy keep my job I was like mm. but you gotta you gotta ask a white no, question this is, this is the interesting part so the reason why they are there is to get paid get yeah. their job and that's it why ask a question that's going to yeah. complicate things yeah. right while you needed a bigger sense of uh, purpose to be yeah. able to do the things that were required from you yeah there's a anecdote that is pretty nice i'm just thinking about how it goes should i give it a try go with the how do you call the guys that build the house mason or carpenters or what? like rebuilding the whole like construction construction worker, worker. Mm -hmm. yeah it was a construction worker so there were three different ones and the first one got asked uh why he's doing uh what he's doing and he's like well, I'm, I'm, I'm building something like mm -hmm. i don't know i'm just like getting something done and uh the second one gosh how did that go <laughs> Okay, I don't remember the, the second one, but the third gosh, one, nice the third one was like uh, really the seeing the. Skipped? Yeah, because I really don't remember anymore. Maybe it comes in the third one. I think one, I know it. You know the first one. Uh, I don't know if it's the same uh, thing, sure. the same thing, but it's about having the overview. So the first one was like, I'm just digging this ditch. The second one is like, I am. Uh, laying the foundation uh, for the construction to sit on and the third one was like i'm building a home for a family where they're gonna have many memories oh, that's to, a beautiful to, to understand the uh, how narrow or wide your vision is in your part in what you're doing as a like the guys who are taking the garbage away mm -hmm. okay Maybe people look at it and say it's it's a unschooled job or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you see, when they go on a strike, you understand that they keep the city a livable place. <laughs> yes. So Absolutely. so to understand that everybody plays a part in a bigger thing, mm -hmm. and that's yeah, that's a purpose thing, right? Like, yeah. why are you doing this? Is yeah, thanks to what I'm doing. Um, People get to enjoy clean streets or, or nice houses or uh, nice superfoods or, or uh, great personal development. And, and uh, yeah, my third construction worker basically was working on building a cathedral. That was the version. Uh, Not just like building something. I don't care what, but really he was like, this is going to be the masterpiece. masterpiece of a cathedral for this country. And like really seeing this as like, I'm a piece in the puzzle of making this happen. And oh, uh, great, yeah, great I was nice. like, yeah, same with the house. It's like, yeah, I'm going to build a house for a family and they're going to create so many memories. Like, this warms my heart, you know, if someone really sees the bigger picture. But of course, it really depends on your, it really depends on your motivation, but also your yeah, The interesting view. part of it is all three of those construction workers are doing the Do work. the same. Yeah. They're doing the work. Yeah. And they're probably equally happy as well. Hmm. That's yeah, the that, point. That, that I don't know. I cannot say. They also say ignorance is bliss. So, so the guy who is uh, all invested in making a nice cathedral, mm -hmm. if you tell him uh, build something that is not as grand as the cathedral, might get upset about it. Yeah. While the guy is only considering with digging a ditch, he's happy to dig this ditch, that ditch, doesn't matter what ditch. Absolutely. Um, Everyone has a role to play. <laughs> it's really true yeah but what you said uh, about your own work that you had colleagues mm -hmm. that were like why do you even ask those questions yeah is exactly that yep. example like what what difference does it make mm -hmm. what i am asked to do i am employed here to do whatever is asked for me mm -hmm. that's why i would never sign up for employment or would i have never been able to don't know what the future might bring mm -hmm. uh to imagine a moment that somebody tells me to do something that makes no sense in my mind. <laughs> I cannot do it. I, I've also 
you learn to you know, yeah attack. no just like us we're also sometimes having intense discussions mm -hmm. when i don't understand the purpose of what's going on yeah because then i cannot do it yeah and this is what we're talking about today if you're talking about getting good at change whether like you saying oh i have 12 years of corporate uh, in me and i'm like i don't care mm -hmm. in the sense that i'm like yeah but you can outgrow that it's not your uh, dna it's not in your genes mm -hmm. it's just something an atmosphere you've been in and you've seen a lot and you take take the good leave the bad yeah but i don't say it as like no, i know no. better huh i don't say it as, as if uh, like i know better no, no, I'm just, that. you usually say it when you're struggling with certain things uh, because you were doing it differently for a long time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. And that's where I'm like, for you, curious about why, like you've gone through a lot of change the last year mm -hmm. from selling your Ducati, your boat, uh, leaving your nice place, living in a better place, this place. But uh, clearly, uh, <laughs> what's it called? With uh, that one, <laughs> why did you uh, create all those changes for yourself? What was the motivation behind it? Honestly, I think at some point you gotta ask yourself if where you are and who you have created thinking this is you mm -hmm. is really who you really are underneath and sometimes you really come to the conclusion that actually maybe you have collected some things and qualities that are actually not so much you and I think I myself like really the last three years have gone through massive changes of like mm. realizing who I really am and like really going back to the source and my essence mm. and being like, how did I grow up? What do I really want? Who I am? Who am I? Like in really in the smallest, uh, smallest space. Mm. And then just realizing that some things I have taken on thinking that this is part of me, but actually I don't like them. And like, yeah, having a big house and that is uh, expensive might feel nice, but actually I don't care about that. Like what I keep saying about our house is like, I like the vibe we have. I like the energy. I like what the house is filled with, like, you mm -hmm. know, the, the human aspect in it yeah. rather than having a beautiful whatever. Like, it's not that I didn't have that before, but what I care is like the connection we have. That is beautiful. And the house is like yeah something necessary but so the why you describe to me is you coming to the point that you're like i created this version of myself that i don't completely resonate with yeah i think it also became a certain challenge for myself to be like how far can i go what to the mean? go of things you know oh, okay. like motorbike for example my gosh super fancy beautiful thing love it super special edition love it but then, like, you gotta sometimes just look yourself in the eyes and be like, love it, cost me a lot of money, not driving it very often. Do I really need it? Mm -hmm. Or is it something that I just, like, consider being super cool and sexy to have? And then be like, yeah, actually, like, I don't miss anything. I mean, the weather is horrible most of the time. It's not that I, like, stay wake up every day and I'm like, oh, if I would have my motorbike, I would just go on a ride. Not at all. So I think sometimes it's really also good to get a point to just challenge yourself and be like, how far can I go? Like, example, working in fashion for 12 years, like you you have no idea how my wardrobe has been looking before I even moved in here. Like, it was like literally five times the size of what I have now. Wow. And of course, you just collect that stuff because you're like, oh yeah, and you know the quality, you get those things super cheap and it's amazing and ah uh, whatever. All those million reasons and at some point you're like but do i really like it no i don't and then you start to strip off and you know like i find it was almost a 
game for me. It was really almost became a game to just test and see how far I can go until it really like starts to hurt and starts to really be the real surface. Like this whole minimalism lifestyle mm -hmm. is part of that. To be like, yeah, how, how much can I just throw out, out of my wardrobe and not miss anything? Let's test. Let's see. Most of it. Yeah. Can I sell my motorbike and still like be happy? The, the, my, my only thing was like, I want to sell it to someone that really appreciates it, right? And we found someone that did. So I was like, it's in good hands. That's amazing. That makes me happy. But I don't miss it anymore. And so like, yeah, I think you really sometimes just collect things around yourself and beliefs about yourself that you're like, yeah, this is me. But actually, if you d dig deeper, you might discover this is not. If I hear you correctly, the, the why behind it is like you wanted to lose the fluff and, and get closer to the real you. Yeah. But you also mm. discover who that person is underneath that yeah, fluff. Yeah, well, definitely a fluff. Quest, quest towards yeah. self-discovery. Yeah. Because obviously, like, in my sense, in my belief, when you get to a burnout, it's like you have been working against your belief and nature for a very long time and like stretch in one direction until you snap snap back. So that's why I was. So it's like, you know, you snap back, but you don't snap back in the middle. And you're like, ah, this is who I am. No, you just snap back in the other direction. You're like, you know, how do I like vibe myself back in the middle of who I am? You just, you just gotta find that. And yeah, but the, the why do you want to be in the middle? There's, there's, there's this. Like that's the conversation mm -hmm. is about why. Because plenty of times you've been enjoying life on the fast lane, right? Yeah. And I wouldn't say I wouldn't again. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, for me, one thing is to ask uh, my manager about the why doing things and um, wanting to understand it in a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. But also just like having a sense of purpose having a sense and purpose in what I'm doing to really like be true to myself, be authentic, be like really who I want to be. And why? Because like that is my source. That's how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. That's really like, I don't want to play someone every day. I really want to be myself with all the awkwardness that comes with it, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et I find that like, this is for me the most, life experience I can get. No, yeah, it's only one life. Yeah. If you don't spend it as yourself, then you <laughs> spend your whole life acting as something Absolutely. you're not. You know, and if I look back at like what I was writing and thinking already seven, eight years ago in my journals, it was already this realization that I want to go way more to my source and be real and authentic and not play a role mm -hmm. but it just needed all those years to really get there so it was always there mm -hmm. i just went really far away mm -hmm. and that is yeah that is really my why to experience life on this level of rawness authenticity realness mm -hmm. this is me yeah i get that i think a big part of the work that i'm doing also is a lot of times uh deconstructing all the programming that we gave ourselves to fit in, mm -hmm. to feel safe, to belong, um, while that results in you showing up as a version of yourself that is way off from the, the real you, the original mm -hmm. you. And, and to understand why you want to be the real you is a different reason for everybody. Yeah. Uh, because it's also scary at the same time. Like all the, am I worth it? Is it good enough? All this stuff. Like when I read a lot of coaches coaching people on imposter syndrome and never understood it what it really meant. of course you don't like, what is <laughs> this imposter syndrome <laughs> it's like yeah that people are gonna find out that the real you is something different so i wasn't aware of how many people are actually mm -hmm. 
showing up differently than they are and feel. Because they think that doesn't cut it or, or whatever. They just like, yeah, I think like, you know, like in some sense, I think humanity is like really looking for standing out. Like almost every human being is trying to stand out with some special quality, some special something. And uh, yeah, if you show extra special skills in some sense, then of course you're going to be like the shining star. So trying to impress people with skills that you maybe half have mm. feels like something that is going to catapult you forward. Mm. I get it. It kind of makes sense that it doesn't resonate with you, but this is also very interesting. Well, I think uh, I didn't have per se an imposter syndrome, but for me, the presentation I gave today also in the barter cycle uh, was about like my trouble with being vulnerable mm. is my version of it maybe you know yeah. but but for me the reason why I'm doing all this work describing all these emotions working with people to recognize and not deny yourself the way you're feeling has to do with me realizing how limiting it is for me like making my life black and white instead of colorful mm -hmm. and at the same time also thinking to myself uh, i'm just curious how much about myself i don't know to change you know because yeah. if you say this is me and that's it <laughs> then just it's pretty foolish <laughs> play 20 30 years and it's like there's a new song on the radio no that's new music i don't do new music i i like li listen yeah. to this music only or uh just anything new mm. is change yeah and whether that's coming from outside externally or like that also affects you internally you're like no i refuse to almost I would say evolve because mm. this is me and then I, I feel like the other approach is like well we can really accelerate how much we can change in one lifestyle lifetime by realizing that hey every time you peel off another layer of, of uh, facades and what you mm -hmm. said like stuff and things that you might think are your identity to realize that your true identity it's completely uh, to be found still, yeah. to be discovered. So if I understand correctly, it's also like basically your journey that you take people on with you. Like your journey of going from black, black and white to color, mm -hmm. to color life. It's also something where people take on the, where you take people on your journey. What do you mean? By showing, people? like, the way you talk about those things and, mm. like, your, the experiences you're making and sharing mm. is also, like, being an example and an inspiration for people. For me, I really believe in leading by example. Um, as a coach, I, I call bullshit on coaches that are... Uh, acting like they've got it all figured out yeah but that's 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 the imposter and non-imposter syndrome what do you mean yeah if you like you basically like you're in the middle of it and that's where you're like leading by example yeah, but you like haven't no, figured it out myself no but, but that's what i believe i don't think you will ever figure it out yes but and i think everybody is always a work in progress that's your belief but there's also that's why i connected to the imposter syndrome it's like if you like i have figured it all out i'm going to show you that it's a different coaching coachy relationship right mm. that's what like my coach was always saying she's like don't you ever think that i'm like smarter whatever better than you mm. no we are completely equal and I'm just going to show you things and you also trigger things in me to show you things. No. So, but that's also just like, hey, I'm, I'm somewhere where you are, but I maybe have different perspectives that are going to no. enhance you, but also you have perspectives that's going to enhance me. It's an exchange. The reason why I use my own process 
in the work that I do is because I can explore that as limitlessly. Yeah. I, I, I have access to my memory bank. I can sit with my emotions, talk about my feelings. Mm-hmm. I cannot use other people's examples or mm-hmm. stories. I, 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 I can read all the books in the world to gather people's knowledge, but I truly believe that wisdom is encapsulated in each and every one of mm-hmm. us. So if I want to share my wisdom, I'm not saying that I'm a wise man, but <laughs> then I need to share it from my own experience. Yeah. But that is really powerful. <clears throat> like being able to open up and being that vulnerable to share and also say in moments, hmm, let me think about it. I'm not sure what to say. That is also very powerful. Why? Because, like, you can show up as having all the answers. That's what brings me back to the mm, not the equal. Or um, be like, hmm, it's a good question. Let me marinate on it for a moment. Mm. That some nothing comes up right now. Mm. You know, that is also very. Yeah, it's just a different way of showing up. But that also explains why you would not understand the imposter syndrome. Or you would not apply it for yourself. Or whatever you would call it. But mm. yeah, I think if I if I understand what you're saying correctly, I think for me the biggest breaking point was when I sat down to write my book. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to write an autobiography. Mm-hmm. And uh, what does that mean? Uh, means that I get to still tell the story of my life. And then I was like, okay, maybe I need to summarize the things that I'm not so proud of to make it a real honest book. Mm -hmm. And as I started writing, I noticed how much my ego just wants to write cool stuff about myself. (laughs) I'm amazing and I'm a baller and I do cool shit and don't fuck with me. I'm like, no, that's that's not why we're here. This is for me it was a process mm-hmm. of reflecting because I was hitting myself on the same board over and over again, mm-hmm. getting tired. And that's when I realized it's saying the things that you're not so proud of is 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 a good step. It's a great step. Mm-hmm. But to confess the things that you are ashamed of, mm-hmm. that's another level of liberation. And maybe you write in your diary some things that, yeah, you you are you weren't so proud of, or something you think you you feel it for a second and you push it away, but to decide to put on paper and publish, yeah, share with the world all the stuff that. First of all, you read it and you're like, what kind of person does this kind of stuff, and then second of all, what kind of person does this kind of stuff, and then says it that he did it. <laughs> But what is the motivation in that? Uh, liberation. That's what I'm okay. saying. Like I love that. For me, the uh, quest towards the truth mm-hmm. and this truth, like, who am I then? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Required liberation. And you can take the spiritual path and sit and meditate and go to satsang, which all I did. To realize mm-hmm. that I'm learning here what I already know. And for me, that's what I find interesting about the ego. You can light a match, set it on flame, burn it down, and it will rebuild a new version of it. And again, it will trick you that it does not mm-hmm. exist. So you gave away your bike and gave away your boat and, and, and sold a bunch of your clothes. But then you're seeing new clothes that you like. So you're gathering stuff again Mm -hmm. and to realize that again and again you can repeat that process and to remind yourself that all of this is not you all the things that are happening here you are just experiencing this Mm -hmm. and for me then that's the yeah the why question like why do you want change is really like you decide what you're going to watch in this life. Mm-hmm. <coughs> if you're like, I've had it with 
Western society. I'm going to go to Africa and live in a tribe. You can. You can. You have to say goodbye to all your friends and loved ones and places you know and cappuccino and uh, all that stuff. Goat milk. Yeah, oat milk. <laughs> no oat milk, goat milk. No vegan cheese. <laughs> yeah, goat milk. <laughs> and you're there and you're living that life. Yeah. And why would you want that? I don't know. But if you have your whys clear, there are limitless possibilities in uh, what this life can be for you. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I also look at life as a thing full of possibilities. But I get um, stuck on making a decision if I don't know the why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, I'm totally on the same page, absolutely. Yeah. You can't even say anything against that. I'm just like, yeah, I mean, having my own companies for the first time, that part of liberation for me. Mm. To like, you know, <laughs> I was saying I'm definitely going to record the video and talk about what it is like to be an entrepreneur versus what it is like to work in a corporate world. Um, at my last gig, we changed the logo in some sense and threw away thousands of euros of uh, like... Equipment, equipment we, material, well, whatever that had the logo because there was a new logo. Those things I just don't understand. I'm, I'm still like, even if I work in corporate, I would still think, geez, we are just throwing out 30k to the window, uh, burning, setting it on fire. Like, how would you do that? So now, having my own business, I'm printing labels and I'm like, mm, color is a bit off, not ideal. No one's gonna know. I'm just gonna put it on the pouch. It's fine. It's mm. okay. So for the first time, it is also a big liberation for me mm. to not need to ask someone, but to decide I want to ask someone. I want to um, consult someone. I want to like include someone in decisions, but really like be mindfulness with mm. the resources and money you have. Yeah, I think so that was also example. going completely against my nature. Yeah, a great example a client of mine recently shared was about... Uh, designing something on herself which she knew wasn't a marvelous design then showing it to a friend of her who was a graphic designer who immediately you had like a bunch of points of improvement and to be like yeah thank you and i know it's not perfect i'm just going to use this for now yeah while probably in a corporate setting uh, it has to raise like it has to pass the bar absolutely like, you've seen me last year this is the best example you've been like hey launch your store no pictures no problem mm -hmm. no description no problem just put something in it press the launch button and mm -hmm. i was just completely struggling with mm -hmm. but at the same time something in me was like play with that mm -hmm. play with that feeling because that's also interesting to like explore your edge of discomfort right that's what mm -hmm. it is in first place when you go through a change that you're not necessarily like, wow, I love it. So I was like, yeah, let's play with this discomfort and see what it does to me if I press the publish button. Like what? Is someone going to call me up and be like, hey, what's this crap? It's not finished. What's this crap? What's this page? I need pictures. Yeah, and why, why you were like curious about it? Because I was like, this is like going so much against my nature. But then I was like, is it my nature or is it something that it's I have nurture, taken yeah, nurture, on yeah. because of working in corporate and being surrounded by all those picture perfect situations? Yeah. But not real life. Mm. So that's why I was like, I really like to explore those edges for me as well mm. and be like, is it me? Hmm, I don't think so. Mm. It's something I have taken on thinking this is me. Mm. So that is for me also a big driver, you know? Yeah, what's your biggest takeaway for today? I think it's really interesting to talk about it and really uh, kind of bring it back to yeah, almost the source of who you are. Exploring that mm. makes you also really think hard about your motivation and your why mm. and how that again connects to a bigger picture I find that really really interesting and I really like that part of the conversation mm. what did you um, what did you yeah, take for away me, for me it reminds me of uh, a friend of mine uh, Brian uh, was telling me a story about his grandfather uh, passing away mm -hmm. 
And it was like, yeah, I was at that funeral and there were so many people and there were so many nice stories about him. I really made me think about uh, what kind of life I want to lead because then you witness the end of life, the passage of somebody. Mm-hmm. And they were like, he was like, yeah, nobody was wow. talking about his work or anything. They were talking about what a great human being mm-hmm. he was. You know, That's and, beautiful. And, and this why thing, I really feel like is an important part of your own foundation, your core in the sense that uh, don't don't think of like, yeah, you need your to-do lists for your daily stuff, but in life, who do you want to be and you know, why? Yeah, but that part also can like, you got to like strip off the ego. Because you, gotta, you can be like, I want to leave no, a footprint. I will, which no, I would say about myself, I want to leave a footprint on this planet. A and footprint. like footprint, food and footprint. <laughs> to like really inspire people mm. to make changes, live a healthier life, etc., etc. Which is like grand. It's a grand vision. Yeah. But you got to like strip that off the ego to be like, I want to leave a big footprint that everyone knows my name. It's not about me. Mm. It's about leaving a... Uh, heritage i think uh, that lives beyond what i completely agree with and i also had to go through that process myself is uh, uh, if you take away all the expectations and 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 programming and and modeling that you did because of your upbringing Mm -hmm. Uh, because of your high school friends and and, and uh, the things that were popular during those formative days, like uh, then what remains that is truly you? Yeah. And um, how do you say it? Uh, that's where I'm like. Then you start the to be mm-hmm. situation and mm-hmm. why you want to be these things because then it regards to the feelings you get from being certain ways Mm -hmm. Uh, while otherwise you're like yeah i watched a lot of mtv cribs so i need a 20 bedroom uh, mansion (laughs) why because it's Mm -hmm. like yeah and you're gonna chase that yeah you're gonna spend a lot of your time and valuable energy acquiring that and that's what you also see a lot of people who motivate themselves to get to a certain point and then they're there and they don't even know why they are there that's what i experienced along the way as well i mean that was also one of the reasons that got me into my burnout to be Mm. like you know like getting more and more money and having more and more opportunities to live the the life Mm. and then uh, looking in the mirror and being like uh, to be honest i'm quite miserable Mm. like you know this is what am uh, i doing here exactly like what is this why am i doing that I'm not happy. I'm not getting any happier. And I think this is really a very valid uh, question to ask. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Drop us a like. Share it with your friends if you like this episode. Tell us why you are chasing change. Who do you want to be? What kind of life do you want to live? Tell us what you want to talk about. What you want us to talk about in the sense of change. So we are always open for topics. Always. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Leave a review. Help us rise in the rankings. Because we are everywhere. We are everywhere. <laughs> Love change out. Bye-bye.